what I want to try and do today is just investigate um, the topic of the gospel and work out what the Bible is um, explaining the gospel is about and why do we care today in 2023 about the gospel? Something that was written down 2,000 years or so ago. Why is it relevant to us uh, today? So that's what we're going to, we're going to investigate uh, today. So in your Bibles, you will have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are the first four books of the New Testament, four gospel records. Now, the word gospel means good news. And so, um, essentially, this is four records of good news to the people who would read them and listen to them. So that's why we've got the word uh, gospel, and that's why we've got the words good news in our title for today, because essentially that's what the word means. So let's, first of all, work out what, um, what, does the, what, what is the gospel all about. Okay, so we're going to um, investigate a couple of the occasions where the word gospel appears and what does it what is it linked with uh, the first one that i want to to go to is in matthew so if you turn to matthew chapter 4 um, matthew in this just the story so far uh, as before we get to chapter 4 is that we've had what's called a genealogy which is like a family tree of jesus uh, we've had the birth of jesus uh, we've had the introduction of Jesus to the, to the people, and John the Baptist did that, and he prepared people's minds ready for uh, the arrival of Jesus and the message of Jesus. And then Jesus himself is prepared um, by um, going to uh, the wilderness, receiving temptations, um, and then he comes out of the wilderness, he gathers to him um, some disciples, and he starts to preach. And that's where we are in um, chapter 4 um, and verse 23, because he's now starting this preaching uh, that he's, he's um, going to be doing. And he's going to spend about three and a half years preaching uh, this message. So in verse 23, it says, Jesus went about all Galilee, um, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all, sickness, all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. So notice there that the first, first um, example there we're looking at, it describes the gospel. So this is good news about something called a kingdom. Now, if you wanna know more about the kingdom, go and watch last year's uh, episode um, on what the kingdom of heaven is. And you'll we'll no notice that it's a reestablishment of the kingdom that was set up under David, etc. So we hear, um, read, that the gospel has got something to do with a kingdom. It's got something to do with uh, the kingdom of, of, of God. And Jesus couples that with healing and miracles. So what he's doing is preaching some, uh, a message, this good news, and he's coupling it with um, giving authority to that message by doing miracles. Um, and the, the authority and the question who is this man, comes up all the way through um, these beginning chapters of Matthew. People just don't understand who this, who this man is and, and how is it that he speaks with such authority. So that's the first, uh, first thing that we learn about, about the gospel then. Let's go to Mark chapter 1. If you're following the Christadelphian reading plan, uh, we have um, three portions of the Bible that we read every single day. And today's reading um, from the New Testament is taken from Mark, the Gospel record of Mark, chapter 1. And uh, in, this, in this Gospel record, this is the shortest of the Gospel records, and it goes very rapidly towards the last week of Jesus' life. And you'll, you'll see in these early chapters a repeated phrase like immediately and, and uh, things like that. So moving the story on very, very quickly. Uh, so in this first chapter... Um, it, it describes what this book is all about, and it says, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Just like Mark, it's very concise, to the point. And in those few words, we know that the good news has something to do with Jesus, and, and Jesus Christ. Christ is not a surname, <coughs> like Lawrence Davenport. It's actually, um, it's... it's um, 
coming in, Tom. Tom, um, just to let you know that the, the talk is not on the kingdom of heaven, it's on the gospel. It's, co- it's on the gospel good news for you. So, okay, just to let you know. Um, so here we've got Christ. Christ is not a surname, it's a title. It means to be anointed. So in this very short verse, this is the gospel, good news to do with Jesus, the anointed, the son of God. And so we have a lot encapsulated into that very first verse of Mark's gospel record. So we now know that the gospel is something to do with Jesus. And we know it's something to do with him being anointed. Um, and it's something to do with him being the son of God. Okay. Now let's have a look at one final um, quote. This is still in the New Testament. But we're now going to Acts of the Apostles. And in Acts of the Apostles... Uh, so, and just to give the context of where we are in the Bible here, Jesus has done his three and a half year ministry. He's been crucified. He's been resurrected. He's ascended to heaven and he has now 12 apostles um, who are then going and spreading the message of, of the gospel far and wide um, across the then known world. And here we have a description in chapter um, 20, and I think this is uh, to Ephesus. I think he's, the, the, the word is being preached in Ephesus, which is a, a place in modern-day Turkey. Um, and, and look at verse 24. But none of these things move me, nor did I count my life dear to me, so that I may finish my race with joy and ministry that I have received from the Lord Jesus. So he's received this ministry a job to go and do, a job to go and preach something, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The grace of God. Now, the grace of God is um, essentially a gift. A gift undeserved is what grace, grace means. And so it's something to do with a gift, a gift of God. So what else do we learn um, about um, the gospel. So uh, let's have a look at a, look at a couple more passages just to dig a little deeper. So again, we're in the New Testament, and this time, if you're an Acts of the Apostles, turn over a couple of pages to the book of Romans. So this is now a letter. And it's a letter of Paul the Apostle to Romans. And in here we have another description of what the, apostle is, uh, what the um, gospel is all about. So, again, the, the Romans is um, it's an, it's a, quite a difficult um, um, letter to consume. It's got quite, uh, quite interesting language and uh, kind of arguments at the beginning. And then we have, towards the end, more of how to apply those, um, those doctrines to your life. So it's kind of, Romans is in like two halves. And, and we get this going by uh, looking at chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, what is, what, what is the power of the gospel? For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. So now we're going a little bit further and we are um, seeing that actually this gospel is not only about um, the kingdom, it's about the Son of God and it's a gift, it's also links to salvation and not just for Jewish believers but also for Greek and Greek here is essentially anybody who is um, not a Jew. By the way I'm reading from the New King James you may have other versions that may have um, other terms for that. Okay so it's to do with salvation. What else do we learn? Again in Romans so turn on a few pages in Romans And you'll go to chapter um, 10. Um, Chapter 10 and verse 15. Um, So this is a really interesting um, little section which talks about how to receive the gospel. And in order to receive the gospel, you have got to, um, you've got to believe in something. And in order to believe in something, you've got to hear about it. In order to hear about it, you've got to have a preacher. And that's what this section is, is talking about. Uh, we'll just go in at verse 14. 
How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? This is about believers calling on the name of Jesus and obeying um, God. Uh, how, will, how shall they believe him of whom they have not heard? You can't believe in something, a message you have never heard. And how will they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. And so that's where you see the link there between the word gospel and glad tidings or good news. And specifically here, we have the gospel linked with peace. So in Romans 1, we had it linked with salvation for um, everyone that believeth. In Romans 10, we have it as a gospel of peace. This is peace in the future. Um, now, finally, let's have a look at 1, one Corinthians. I know previously I've got my Corinthians and my Chronicles mixed up. I'll try not to do that again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And this is, uh, again, a chapter which is um, often termed the resurrection chapter because it talks about um, the change of body of a believer in the future. Um, and we're not going to deal with the details of that. We're going to just look at um, the, the references to the gospel in this chapter, and those come in the first four verses. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, and which also you received, and in which you stand. So this is something you've given, been given a message, just like in Romans, you've been given a message, you've believed it, you've gone through this process of belief, and now you stand in it. So this is not something that you just listen to, it's a one-off thing. This is something that you then live, you stand in it. By which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word that I have preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And so we have to keep in memory, we have to remember the things that have happened uh, in the past. We have to remember the message of the gospel. And it's also linked to the sacrifice of Jesus. It's linked directly to the effect of the sacrifice of Jesus. And again, this is a, the resurrection chapter, and it talks about how the resurrection of Christ is, a, is a, 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 the first fruits of them that then would, would be resurrected in the future. And so if we put all that stuff together that we've learnt, we can kind of summarise it like this. So the hope of salvation. So what is the gospel? The gospel is the hope of salvation and peace in the kingdom of God for all those that have listened and understood the message. That's something that we saw in those, those messages from uh, Romans and how we should stand and we should maintain um, the message that we have understood and believed. This is made possible by the grace of God, that's the, the gift that's undeserved, and the obedient sacrifice of um, his son, Jesus Christ. Remember, the word Christ meaning the anointed. So that's, in summary, is what the gospel is about. And there's many more scriptures which talk about um, the gospel, the message of the gospel. And um, you've got three records of the gospel that you can go and read in, in depth. Now, what we're going to now consider is... Um, what does it mean to us? And, but before we do that, we're going to ask the question, all of, them, all of the passages that we've looked at so far um, have all been from the New Testament. And when people talk about the gospel, they often, their minds immediately go to the New Testament. They start with Matthew and they go through and say, that's where the gospel message is. And so the question is, whether the gospel is just in the New Testament. The go is the gospel just in the New Testament? Now we had a reading from Galatians chapter 3. Did anybody notice? This is um, audience participation now. 
in the, in the minimalist sense. Um, did anybody notice who in the Old Testament was linked with the gospel? Maybe among the younger members. Over there, the back there. Abraham. Abraham. Where's Abraham in the Bible? Where does he appear in the Bible? Come on, you can do it. Genesis. Genesis. Thank you, Tom. From in Genesis. And Genesis is in the Old Testament. So let's go and read that together because we'll, um, we can see that the gospel is actually well and truly in the um, Old Testament. Or it's founded on the things that we read of in the Old Testament. Let's go and remind ourselves of, of um, where Abraham is mentioned in Galatians. <clears throat> so Galatians is, a, this is an interesting chapter because this brings together the law and Christ. And it's essentially a linking the things in the Old Testament and the events in the Old Testament with a believer in Galatia, which was um, not in Israel, um, and, and how those two things were linked. And so we can think about that for ourselves. Like how, if we put ourselves as Galatians, how is it that the things of Abraham are related to us? And we'll come to that in a moment. But um, let's have a look at um, Galatians chapter 3. Uh, verse 6, maybe, first of all. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore, and know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. It's interesting, isn't it? Only those that are um, of faith are sons of Abraham. It's essentially saying that faith is the way to become associated with Abraham. Um, and the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham before saying in you all the nations shall be blessed in you all the nations shall be blessed now where do we find that where do we find those um, those words well we've already know that if we want to know about Abraham we go to Genesis and specifically those words are um, drawn from the early um, parts of Genesis where it's talking about Abraham being um, brought out of the land of Ur um, which is in Mesopotamia um, in Genesis 12 so let's go to Genesis 12 keep your fingers in Galatians if you haven't if you've lost it already then you have to go and find it again but Genesis chapter 12 uh, right at the beginning of Genesis 12 uh, this is Abraham faithfully following the words of God and coming out of a country uh, to follow and to go and, get, um, uh, um, go and get the promises that he's been given by God. So let's have a read of the first few verses. So Genesis 12, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abraham, so it, Abraham, it's Abraham here. I've, it's not a spelling mistake in your Bibles. Abraham had his name changed to Abraham um, later on. Uh, in the story. Uh, so Abraham, get thee out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in all families of the earth, um, and in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. And so here we have a series of promises which are given to this man, um, Abraham. And these promises are what is related um, to the believers in Galatia, um, in, in, Gal in uh, Galatians uh, chapter 3. That's what, these, that's, that's what it's referring back to. It's saying this is in some way related to the gospel. The gospel of, of uh, the New Testament is built on a foundation of these promises in Genesis chapter 12. Um, so they're rooted in, in the, the words that were given to, to Abraham. And I've just summarized them there on the screen. So make uh, you a great nation. So he would, at this point, he had no children and he was being promised that he would be a great nation. He would bless those that uh, bless you and in you all families of the earth will be blessed. There are other promises um, made to Abraham, and we, you can couple those all together. Um, if you look in um, sort of chapters 17 and 22 that they're added to, those promises are reiterated to Isaac and then Jacob. 
So the sons of Abraham. So this is an enduring set of promises that came through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then into Israel. It was a promises that were linked to Israel. And here in Galatians, we're having them linked to anybody who is in the family of Abraham through faith. And so that's, that's how um, the, the, the message um, got to the Galatians. Right, let's have a look at that in a little more detail just to conclude. So the first thing is, um, why is this gospel good news for you? So let's go back to Galatians 3. Hopefully you're still there in Galatians 3. And we'll just conclude by looking at a couple of verses which link this gospel message which was preached to Abraham to us today in uh, 2023 um, in rugby, uh, not Galatia, um, but in rugby. Why is this? Uh, of importance to us. So Galatians chapter 3 and verse 20, uh, towards the end of the chapter here, we have uh, the application of this to, to believers. So in fact, actually, we can go in at verse 26. Um, because we've gone through this process of talking about the law and how the law was like a schoolmaster, I think it is in the AV, and in, in the New King James here, it's a tutor. So you're no longer under a tutor, which was the law, but now uh, you have um, the, the commandments of Christ. We have Christ, um, who we can look to as an example. Verse 26, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So the, the, the good news of the gospel that we've been looking at is pulling together all of these threads that we've already seen. It, we, knew, we heard, didn't we, that the gospel was the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay? For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's showing us that baptism is a key element of demonstrating that process of faith. Remember in Romans, we talked about if you've heard, you've believed, you can only um, hear if you have a preacher. And in order to demonstrate that you have believed, you've learned your, the lessons of the gospel, is to be baptized. And that comes out here in verse 27. As many of you has been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. This is open to all. Anybody. So this is anybody who wants to have access to the gospel message. There is no barrier whether you're male, female, bond, free, um, Jew or Greek. So wherever you come from, you can all have access to the hope of the gospel. That's what uh, that verse is saying. And if you are Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if you, this is the, this is the gospel message. So if you um, accept the gospel message, you link yourself with Christ through baptism, you're essentially linking yourself to the promises that have been made to Abraham all those years ago. And those promises are linked to the kingdom linked to the kingdom um, again um, slightly out of the scope of, of what we're talking about today but so the gospel message here is something which is open to all and we can link ourselves with it through baptism and we'll just conclude by looking at one verse now from ephesians so if you are in galatians you just turn over maybe two or two pages or so, and you'll be in um, Ephesians. And we have, the, um, we have a, a phrase here which is linking the, the gospel with a mystery that has been revealed. The mystery of, the, of God, um, uh, the mystery of the gospel being revealed. So let's have a look in Ephesians chapter 4. So in Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read the first, let's read the first 10 verses of this. this is, it's a good, uh, good passage, this is. Um, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. <clears throat> so this again is a letter to another ecclesia, uh, an ecclesia called Ephesus. 
This is Paul the Apostle writing to that ecclesia, and he's, um, he's yeah, he's writing to that ecclesia, or that, that church in, in, um, uh, in, in, the, in Ephesus. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you have been called. Do you remember the calling that we, we spoke about in Romans? Those that have been called are the people who have heard, and they've only heard because they've had a preacher. And all loneliness and gentleness with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. Endeavour to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling. There's lots of ones there, isn't there? There's lots of unity being bound together uh, in, in, this, in this hope, the hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of, of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But, verse 7, to each of you, um, each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Do you remember we talked about grace before? That gift that's undeserved? Again, we see that coming up here. Therefore, he says, verse 8, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now, this he ascended, um, what does it mean? But that he, who, he also first descended into the lower part of the earth. He who ascended is also the one who ascended far above all heavens that he might, be, um, might fill all things. And he gave himself, I'm not sure whether I've got the right um, section here. I think you want chapter three. Do I want chapter three? Well, it was good though, wasn't it? <laughs> Do I want chapter, is that the mystery of, ah oh, yeah, it is the mystery of build. Yeah, I just, I've gone to the wrong chapter. But it was really good. So, um, re carry on reading that in your own time. Uh, but let's go to uh, the, end of uh, the end of that section in chapter 3, which is the purpose of the mystery. Verse 8. To me, who am, uh, am less than the least of all saints, and this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. This is something which has been revealed by God. Man wouldn't have worked this out for themselves. This is something that needs to be revealed by God. And to, and to make all see that um, um, what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through um, Jesus Christ, to the intent that, um, that, that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. And so we see, don't we, in this, in this process here of this mystery of the gospel being revealed through Christ and that mystery um, um, being something that man would never have worked out for themselves. Um, and it was through Christ and providing a way of salvation, a salvation for, for mankind. So I would recommend that you open your Bibles, um, you maybe do some research in the Old Testament, but you go and have a read of the, the gospel message, because as we saw in Galatians, this is something that we can access today, it's something that we can apply to our lives and provide us with hope and peace. It's a gift of God that should not be um, overlooked. Thank you.